Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and the end of last week, B4 Artist 1.0 was released, and seeing as 1.0 is one of those milestone releases, I figured I would definitely cover it here. Now, I've actually covered B4 Artist on this channel in the past. If you've never heard of it, the B stands for Blender, the 4 Artist stands for, well, for Artists. And the entire idea behind it is basically they took Blender, in this case, Blender 2.79, so the most recent, current, published version, and they basically tweak the UI to be more, in their opinion, artist friendly. So what they've kind of done is they've taken all of the very keyboard centric commands from the traditional Blender approach and instead move towards a much more visual focus. So it's a lot more comfortable probably for uh, Max or Maya users to migrate over using B for Blender, uh, B for Artist, sorry, instead of the traditional Blender. Now this is entirely an opinion based thing and I know some people are going to hate this user interface and that's okay, okay it's not for you. This is 100% for people that just currently don't really like the current Blender interface. Um, now, as I mentioned, I did cover it in the past. I will link that down below in a minute. Um, you can see here, B for Artists is available at b4artists.de. As always, I will link that down below. It's available for Mac and Linux, uh, sorry, Mac and Windows. Sorry, Linux folks, you have to build from source because there is currently no uh, maintainer for the Linux version. I do believe it will build from source, so you should be okay. And it's available in both an installable, executable, and just as a straight out extract and run zip file format. As I mentioned a second ago, this is um, 2.79. So all the functionality you saw in Blender 2.79 is here in B for Artists. And here you can see B for Artists in action. Now their ethos or their design mentality behind this once again was to move everything that had um, keyboard combination, there is now a visual analog to it. So there is a button or an icon or a menu item for everything. And there actually were something like 90 or so items in Blender itself that had nothing other than a keyboard shortcut. Another thing they've done is they've gone through and stripped out all the duplication in the menus. So the menus here are a lot more streamlined. You'll see they're a lot shorter and they also have a uh, much shorter and more concise tool tips. Um, this is one of those things Blender did have a, a big duplication of tool tips in the way they did things. Now another thing you'll notice right away is things are iconified. So it's the same basic tray and you can actually turn on um, this option to switch it back to the way it was before. Uh, but you can see here with the icons instead of the full description, you have to do a lot less scrolling on the sidebar. Now obviously with Blender 2.8, Blender itself is looking at addressing a lot of these issues, but until Blender 2.8 gets here, this might be a nice alternative for you. Um, it is ultimately still Blender, but you see they've done a lot of sh um, toolbar shortcuts so that you can see, for example, a lot of people would switch between uh, the different viewports. So left viewport, front viewport, etc. Well, what they've done is gone ahead and made an icon for it. Makes sense to me. Uh, same thing you see here at the top. We've got um, a bunch of toolbars here. You can define your own toolbars. I believe you can, I think you can drag them off. I might be wrong on that. But as you can see, you can add your own items to the toolbars. There are icons for all of the items in the toolbars. They've also done some other stuff. Like if you go into these uh, back menus, they've done, uh, they've predefined some of their own material types to get you up and going. And they also have an inline preview so you don't have to scroll back to the top in order to see it. Um, some pretty slick stuff that they've done in this release, but pretty much all of it is in the name of accessibility. Now, I'm not going to go into a one-for-one -one shot of uh, what is different in this version versus in Blender uh, for a couple of reasons. First off, as I mentioned earlier, I actually already covered uh, B for Artist in a video a while back called uh, Fixing User Blender's User Interface. That one was a bit controversial of a title. Uh, but anyways, it kind of already went into B for Artist in its earlier release. In addition, the B for Artist folks have um, actually done a video that kind of showcases uh, what's different between B4 Artist and in Blender. Um, so really, I will just link both of those down below along with this link here so you can download uh, B4 Artist. Once again, sorry Linux folks, there is no maintained Linux version you will have to build from source. I uh, imagine if you do love the project though, they would love to have a Linux maintainer on the project and probably get a hold of them if you are capable of doing so. Now Blender Artist, again, is Blend for Artist, well, sorry, B for Artist is not for everybody. I, I understand that, but if you like 
this look, this layout. If you like the idea of, let me show you one thing that's changed here. Left click for select and move. That alone is going to be worth the um, cost of admission for many people. And of course you are um, diverging from the standard Blender layout. And that's going to have kind of a catch-22 because then you're going to run into uh, tutorials, etc. that are not for this set of keyboard bindings. But they also have a mode for that. So you can actually switch your keyboard. Um, it's in the splash screen. Uh, yeah, you can switch your interaction mode uh, back to Blender's default, and then you can follow along with 99% of tutorials that way. So even if you're using the, someone else's help materials and the traditional Blender workflow, you should be able to adapt it easily enough uh, because what they have also done is they've changed some of the keyboard shortcuts, and that's going to really break a lot of people with the, what they already know for Blender. But at the same time, Blender did have some very strange choice for um, key keyboard shortcuts. They had some things like uh, control shift Q period kind of thing for I don't know setting a pivot to at the axis or whatever and what uh, B for artists did was basically remap that to something a lot easier a lot more common another cool thing they did right here is there's this important hotkeys and you can press show text and you can turn this on while you're learning and you'll notice right here they've basically done a quick list of the most common hotkeys that you're going to use so when you're just learning you can have this nicely in your background and um, displaying what the most common hotkeys are for you now another really nice thing uh, with blend for or be for artist is they've also done their own full searchable help so you come in here and you go to their manual they've got a full manual going on uh, that is here you can see every little part of it so if you're working on modeling for example Go to modeling, it's broke down into sections, and each section in turn is a PDF document. So they basically documented their version of Blender in a searchable format comprehensively. So this is also a very accessible version of Blender. Now granted, it's a fork, so you're going to basically be learning to do things a little bit different than the default way. Uh, but if you don't like the default way, but you like the idea of using Blender, Be For Artist may be the perfect project for you. And once again, if you love Blender the way it is, just ignore that this project exists. Although it, it may be kind of funny if 2.8 makes a bunch of changes you hate, Be For Artist may be where you escape from your familiarity going forward. Uh, anyways, that is B for Artists. They just hit their 1.0 uh, birthday, so I decided I would do this video about it. Once again, all of the links I discussed will be in the comments down below. It's definitely an interesting project. I, I salute them for making it. You know, a lot of people are just turned off by Blender's... Um, design ethos and this is again uh, they just said instead of the keyboard centric we are going visual centric and that generally is more accessible easy to learn now you may trade off to a certain degree for productivity down the road um, but at that point in time you can migrate over to full blender if that's your thing or if you get comfortable with this you know, you may not have to. And where it really comes in handy is when you've got the uh, the more casual market and you're gonna have these people that basically um, they never really um, spend enough time with Blender that the keyboards become, you know, memorizing these workflows becomes, uh, you know, imprinted in their memory so that they become really, really fast. For those people, Blender will always be frustrating and this will probably be a great alternative for them. So if you're going to be using Blender just on occasion, B for Artist might be a great choice. Now it's been around for a while, but the 1.0 release means that you basically hit the design goals they set out for when they started this project. And I think there's a three-year-old project now. So uh, 